Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and I am here with another DC20 to Foundry installment. Uh, we've got Patrick here. Hey, Patrick. Hi. As you guys know, Patrick is the developer of the DC20 game system for Foundry specifically, right? So we're working with uh, the Dungeon Coach to bring DC20 into Foundry. And this episode, we're going to talk about automation and what automation uh, what kinds of automation are built into the system. There is some new stuff for those of you who have been playing with the system. It is September of 2024, and there are, as of yesterday, right, Patrick, new new updates to the system that include some of these automation updates. Yes, exactly. All right, Eight. perfect. Uh, what, what version is it? 8.2. 8.2, perfect. Okay, great. Well, I'm looking at a world. I'm in your world, as a matter of fact, and I've got a player character, Albert, here. And so you're going to help me kind of, uh, kind of, we're going to walk through some of the the major elements that we talked about uh, kind of before this call. And then uh, you can kind of point me around and we may share your screen at some point as well. But let's, let's kind of talk about the first thing on the list. We've got condition automation. What does that mean as far as the DC20 system goes? Yeah, so if you open your character sheet and go into effects tab, it's the, with this lightning bolt. Yes, uh, got it. You you can see that now conditions look a little bit different. There are no more exposed one, exposed two, etc. Now stacking conditions actually stack. So if you click on exposed, you can see, for example, that it will uh, exposed. Uh, there it you is. Can, yeah, you can click uh, one more time and you will get two stacks of exposed. Oh, gotcha. Great, great. Yeah. Okay, also, yeah, that cleans it up a lot. Yeah. Also, there are some conditions that make other conditions. So, for example, par paralyzed will also make you exposed. So, if you click on para paralyzed. Oh, interesting. Uh, let's see. Paralyzed. There it is. Yeah. So, you can see that exposed. Oh, it added a, yeah, will... it added a, a tick to exposed. And exactly, then it... and oh, also there are some uh, locks on other conditions that are also provided by Paralyzed, and you oh, cannot fantastic. switch those off. So wait, so that means that when I'm paralyzed, I can't be stunned or incapacitated because those would conflict, is that right? Those are al already uh, in in the stunned condition. So... Oh, it is. Okay, great. Okay, so you automatically those are apply not... them. Yeah, so mm. those do not stack, so that's why are th those are locked. I so. see. Oh, fantastic. Okay, super smart. Love it. Mm. Mm, and I'm just yes. left-clicking to enable, and I'm right-clicking to disable. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, this is also a new feature. Now conditions can be applied from chat messages, uh, similar to how it works with uh, effects. Yeah, so Ooh. for example, I will roll something to uh to to chat message so now uh you can see uh on that, that there is great great bow or you cannot because I oh i think button. you might have rolled as a yeah. gm because i can't see the chat so now now you can see that uh got it great bow roll yeah yep so now probably as a player you cannot see f effects uh i mean conditions so you cannot see burning for example you're right chat message. Okay, so maybe you can jump uh, on my screen for a while. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at your screen now. Okay, so now you can see that as a GM, I have access to burning condition that I can apply apply to your character uh, uh, directly from chat message. Uh, another uh, thing nice. on the right side, you can see there are uh, those little icons with currently uh, enabled and disabled temporary conditions so Great. you can see that there is and we, you can turn that off and delete it directly from here so you don't have to click around here fantastic and you can also quickly check tooltip of that condition uh, or effect if you want just by hovering over it so, so it's also useful Another thing, as you can see, there is this physical save here on the chat message. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, before, only DM could roll those. Right now, still only DM can click on those buttons. 
but if I when I click on that button, now you can see that you got prompt that ask you for making a role. Uh, oh, cool. Okay, great. So you you then click it as a GM to prompt me, and then I can do my physical save from here. Mm -hmm. uh, I can decide if I'm rolling with advantage. Uh, what's the run roll level check do? It looks like a little uh, search. We will talk about it in the second. Oh, okay, great. Right now, just roll. All right, let's do it. And me as a GM, Ooh, I can uh, immediately see if you succeeded or, or fail on Very that cool. roll, and then I can apply condition or not, depending on what happened. Oh, I see. Okay, wonderful. Okay, yes. awesome. So now we can jump to roll, roll level, I think. Okay. So some conditions, uh, for example, hindered will make you roll attacks with disadvantage or exposed will make you roll against the target with advantage. So let's say, uh, yeah, I, I see you, you are uh, doing those conditions already. So we can, okay. yeah, hin let's say we, we are hindered two and exposed one. And yeah. for some reason, we will attack ourselves because I don't have any other token here. So, <laughs> fair. Uh, you can target Albert, and then go on your uh, in uh, on your character sheet and uh -huh. use any weapon or. All right, I'm gonna attack with my long sword. Yeah, oh, and sword. then th yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, enhancements for him. But uh, yeah, before you before you attack, you oh. can right click on that attack uh, button, on that roll button. Oh, and okay. now you have a pop up with uh, roll lever calculation. So depending on conditions or and some other stuff, for example, multiple check penalty. We are not in combat, so right now it it doesn't count multiple check penalty. But but you can see that. Mm. Uh, because he's hindered two and exposed one, uh, you get one advantage and two dis 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 well, 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 I cannot talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so it, by right clicking that, it shows me what uh, what's about to be applied, what advantages. Are yeah, exactly. And then you can still manually edit uh, those values on the roll on the roll menu itself itself. So. Oh yeah. So uh, over to the right, I can see that I can. Uh, I can uh, right and le left click these advantages to add more, or delete, or delete them. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, this also work with uh, any other check on character sheet. So you, for example, if you are uh, heavily impaired, mm -hmm. uh, you will have uh, these uh, disadvantages on might and agility save. So, for example, if you right click on might save button, so there is check and save. And when oh, you cover yeah, over, yeah. Okay, okay, right. right click. You want yeah, me to do my roll... check? All right, expected roll level disadvantage from heavily impaired. Yep, cool. Yeah, and now if you roll, it will automatically roll with disadvantage. There it is. So that's that's roll level. Uh, okay. Also, we can do it for multiple check penalty. So, so let's you've start done it for checks, it. saves. Yeah, um, everything. We everything will... on here has it. It looks like. Yeah, we will cool. jump into uh, effect itself to show you how it, how to do it. Okay. Uh, okay. So now, uh, for example, we have Albert is already uh, in combat right now, mm -hmm. and it's his turn. So we will uh, have our multiple check penalty counted. So okay. let's say attack with uh, long sword uh, once. All right. Okay. Uh, we will get rid of all other conditions. And now right uh, right click on attack to run roll level check. Wait, oh right click on it. Yeah, and now as as you can see, it uh... will pop up with Yeah, exactly. And now okay. you can see that 
uh, it shows you that multiple check penalty is applied, so you oh, have yeah. disadvantage uh -huh. level one. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to show you with. You want bit. me to? You want me to attack myself again? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Uh, okay. So now we can jump to one of those effects. So, okay. so maybe jump on my screen now. Let's see, for example, hindered. And now you can see that it has a roll level with melee martial attack and all those other stuff. Uh, ah, there's okay. Prepared. So this is where you've implemented the automation. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So value of one, type disadvantage, and some kind of label that will be shown with those. Uh, yeah, right here. So. Ah, I see. And have you implemented this, these uh, for all the status effects that are standard with DC twenty? Uh, yes, most of uh, status effect have some kind of uh, some kind of uh, automation wi within mm -hmm. those. So stuff like uh, charmed is not automated because right now there is no option to uh, select who was your charmer. Oh, I see. So that's something I hope will be I will be able to implement in the future. Okay. Same with taun taunted, but for most other conditions, it should work just fine. Okay. Great. Uh, all right. So maybe I will also show you there is a role request dialog. So as a DM, as a DM, I can just ask my players to do some kind of check. For example, acrobatic check. And I can send roll request, and now on your uh, screen it should pop up. Yep, I got my request for an acrobatics check. Oh, this is where yeah. that thing is. Okay. Yep, I'm looking at that now. Yeah. You so want me to go ahead and roll it. Yeah. Why not? All right. I'm and, rolling with uh, disadvantage, also. right? And I'm just expanding it out in my chat card to show people the calculation. So I had a. So, yeah, so uh, two D twenties plus two, because two is what my acrobatic or what my uh, agility bonus is. So yeah, those one two D twenties two D twenties select lower plus two. Yeah, perfect. Got it. More or less, I showed that already, but we can jump to effect sheet improvements. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, it looks different than default effect configuration window. So we have here, we have few new things. So core status condition. Mm -hmm. So for example, if some kind of effect also apply taunt, for example. So you have effect, I don't know, maybe some monster does destroys your armor and also stuns you. So yeah. you don't have to create those, all, all those. Oh, nice. Uh, so you don't have to create them from you... scratch. You can just say, yeah. just apply the... Whatever yeah, exactly. Effect. You can select. And how what, do you what how do you apply supposed. multiple effects? It seems like you can. So right now you can only apply one core status that okay. is copied. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you select stand, uh, then you should also um, uh, add it here, and uh, you also should add all those other. So expose also is connected to stand. So those uh -huh. are for uh, coloring, I would say. Uh, if you have those added here as yeah. status conditions, those also will also go blue. Ah, uh, uh, I see. Okay. Like that, yeah. But only changes to actor will only be copied from that core status condition. Okay, so that means that the rules associated with stunned, for example, the automation associated with that will be applied to the actor, but the automation associated with hindered and exposed would not be automatically applied. Automation will be applied, but uh, it won't be displayed. So, for example, if I will have only stunned here. Oh, okay. Uh, you will see that only stand is so, yeah, it's displayed or or selected. But uh, if you look in the background, it uh, adds all those other uh, things. So exposed from stands, uh, uh, 
And so on this config page, there is also one, uh, one more thing. So disable effect when. So here I will maybe show it on example of uh, barbarians um, berserker. So mm -hmm. we have this new armor calculation. So berserker defense, but only if armor is not equipped. If armor is equipped, it will be disabled. So right now you ah. can see it is disabled because we have a novice light armor on. If we take it off, you can see that our armor class changed. Yes. Um, and this effect is enabled. Oh, great. Love it. Here nothing changes. And there, here we have... Right now we don't have to provide keys anymore. At least some basics, basic ones. Nice. Uh, we, we can, if you want. Uh, or if something is not in that drop down, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of stuff already. Uh, player or DM don't have to know all data structure to change stuff. Right. That's that's so he important. Could, yeah. Select what interests him and just right. uh, edit that out. And where does somebody find documentation on how they format the um, the actual values? <clears throat> In the, in the yeah, so for, right. for most uh, things, it are, those are just flat values. Let's try something else, for example, with Petrified. Uh, just simple true, false, or if it's a bonus, it's most likely some number. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, but there are some more complicated things like. Mm -hmm. uh, role level or some events that we will jump to later mm -hmm. mm, so probably best though, for them to look at some examples of other conditions and see how those e, are formatted yes and and also i've created system guide journal that explains what are events uh, conditionals and how to copy enchantments to another items oh great so it's something uh, people can read too. Perfect. Okay, so it's in the system guide in their compendiums. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now... I like that there's so many ways to get to the conditions as well. Because when you're in the heat of combat, seeing them on the right or right-clicking your token, these are all yeah. good things to have at your fingertips. And also a small tip for people watching most things. You can edit most things by clicking middle mouse button on those. So I oh. saw people uh, entering adding edit mode on or use that drop down here. But even with some conditions, you can just middle click and you have access to those immediately. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. So it's also useful. Maybe we can now jump to improvements to enchantment system. I want to use uh, Hunter Strike because it's huge. So. Okay. Uh, Hunter Strike with a lot of different modifications to our weapon. Yes. Uh, also, one thing. Uh, now, when you see those purple links, I would say, uh, on the character sheet, you can click those and see what that what that thing is. Nice. So, That's so helpful. It works the same when jumping between items to... Uh, okay, so we have Great Bow and we have a lot of Hunter Strike options. Wow. And before, it was just simple plus two damage. And right now... We are able to add another formula instead of just flat damage. So you can see here, for example, uh, poison will deal poison damage. So let's add it here. Roll. <laughs> and we have three piercing and two poison damage. So nice. we can configure all of those values on enchantment tab. You can see that we have a uh, few new things so adds new formula uh, either ah. healing or damage formula overrides damage type you can select some other damage type that wow it will this is powerful do. yeah so it it's useful for bound, bounded weapon for example because it allows you to change damage type or of given weapon So now you can see we have 
or we don't. Ah, okay, we need to provide a uh, name of that weapon, so. Oh, okay. So it will be Great Bow. All right, and now we should see, see it here, yeah. Change damage to Bounded. And oh. it, it will change damage to ra Radiant. So if we attack with that bow... Wow, cool. It will deal uh, Radiant damage instead of Piercing. Love it. And Man, that is one so great. Thing. So that's all under the Enhancement tab? Yeah, exactly. And so you one can just add, thing. what, as many formulas as you want? Or, like, what's the limitations here? Mm, each enhancement can provide only one formula. Okay. So... Uh, oh, but each enhancement, yeah, which you probably wouldn't, in, in a lot of cases, need more than one. I guess you would know better. Um, yeah. Wow, that's and you, could, you can just create more enhancements, and that's... Oh, that you can work. even uh, dictate how many actions and other things it might require for mm. that particular enhancement. Yes. And also, if it has charges, you can. That's also some. Uh, that's also a neat thing, I would say. For example, we need our angel born celestial magic. Here you can see that it would would give us uh, one spell uh, from divine spell list, mm. and it will allow us once per long le le rest to cast that spell for one mana point less. So it is already uh, here in enchantments. Okay. And now we need to provide that spell name, so it will be Guiding Bolt for us. Right now it's not yet automated, but I have plans to make it automated, so you will, when you will drop that celestial magic on your character sheet, you will have a pop-up. Oh, hey, provide us with name. your mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. provide yeah. us with your name. Yeah, I could see people forgetting that step until they go, why isn't this working? And then they yeah. have to go in there and fix it. And now, when we look at guiding ball, we have celestial magic here. Here, mm -hmm. it will uh, add. Uh, it will make uh, make us use one mana less. Uh, and you can see that it has charges. Mm -hmm. And with those options selected, so consume so additional charge. So walk me through charge one mana less is where the the star up above right is my mana. Is that that's the negative one? Yeah. Or sorry, yes. I'm looking um, on the left here on your uh, your configuration. Yeah, so that's my minus one means it will add one mana. So I see. Uh, and now and when we consume have... a charge, okay. And where do you yeah, select that's... how many charges you have? Uh, on usage cost. Ah, uh, okay. Here. And then per long rest. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we have consume addi additional charge selected. So by default, it will consume. One more charge from Celestial Magic, but because we are copying that enchantment to some other item, Guiding Bolt in our, our case, and we have selected uh, Subtract from Original, we will subtract fr by using that enchantment, we will subtract from Celestial Magic item. So now we have no mana. But with that enchantment, we can cast this spell only with action points. Uh, so we roll. Uh, we rolled not one, so we are exposed. Uh, but still, we did roll that item. Mm -hmm. And now you can see that Celestial Magic was subtracted. And if you want to do it again, we will have information that we cannot do, a, do that because Celestial Magic, Magic has not enough charges. Oh, great. Okay, great. Yeah, and again, so you configured all this. This is ready to go, but this is for folks who want to um, create this kind of automation and other items and spells. Uh, just yeah, to understand exactly. how the automation's working and to be able to come in here and make changes. Yeah, my, my goal is to have everything configurable so there are no hard-coded conditions or stuff like that. We will see that in a moment when we jump to event system. So now we can jump to events. Uh, okay, so we can create events 
with our effects. Uh, for example, bleeding in the background creates event. Uh, event. Uh, maybe we will jump to that system guide. Yeah. It will be easier to go over. So events are triggered during a game uh, when different conditions are met. Uh, I would say it's early beta of the of this event system, so there are not a lot of triggers. Okay. But we have turn start, turn turn end, damage taken, healing taken, and attack. So this one will be triggered when yeah. player is making an attack check. Okay. Um. And we also have different types of those events. So by default, we can use basic event that will mainly be used to pre and post event triggers. Mm -hmm. I will go to that later. But for bleeding, for example, we use event type uh, damage. And sorry for everyone if you're wondering why it's a little fuzzy. It's because we're doing this over Discord. Um, but I'll, I'll try to zoom in and... Yeah, so we have a uh, damage event type and we have to provide few special fields for that uh, event type. So we have to provide label uh, that will be displayed uh, when it uh, happens. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to provide value, so how much damage will we take and mm -hmm. type of that damage. In case of bleeding, it's true damage, so we provide true. And if it's continuous, so it, if it will uh, respect continuous damage rules. For example, when you, in DC20, when you are uh, on death's doors, you don't take continuous damage. Right now, for example, right now with bleeding, I will cre clear chat. We should take one damage on the, on the beginning of our turn. And as you can see, we did. Yep. From bleeding, so everything works, same with Burning and poison, for example. Uh, here we go. Bleeding, wow. burning, poisoned. Uh, we can revert that. So that's one application of that. So it's healing or damage. It's similar. We also have check request and save request. So it will work, for example, with, with our overload magic. When we jump to effects of that one. We can see that it has save request, uh, trigger turn start, start and check key, prime attribute. So right now, let's... Uh, Remind me I what happens say, when overload magic triggers? It, uh, on, uh, when you uh, are using overload magic, you have to make a save against your attribute, uh, against your save DC. Uh, at the beginning of each turn, or you will be exhausted. Nice. You will get stack of exhaustion. So with with that, I think you can jump on your screen, and pop up should appear that you need to roll. Sure enough, I have a prime save. Yeah. Roll to make. Exactly, and I think you succeeded. Nice. Yeah, you did. Okay. So nothing bad happens to you. But you would have automated the exhausted condition that would have automatically applied if I had failed? Right now, no. Right now, there is not adoption. It's in the works. As I said, it's early beta of that system. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Ench enchantment system is in yeah, yeah. Early, is, early years. Is exhausted even on my list of conditions? or is it uh, No, like exhausted that? is uh, above your character uh, portrait. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. All right. So that does not would not automatically give me a, a, a take no. on exhaustion. Okay, I'd have to go in here and manually set it. Yeah. And also, I think I prefer it that way. So uh, the last word is for the DM to give it to you. So maybe that's something that I can see some switch in the system uh, configuration mm -hmm. that will automate that, but. As a basic thing, I would say DM should be final, ju final judge in that. Okay, great. You hear that, DMs? You got to apply your own exhaustion. Okay. Yeah. So with e event uh, events, we have also pre and post trigger. Uh, pre trigger is just a simple pop up that will ask you 
<clears throat> hey, do you want to use that event right now with... Because it was triggered, but we are not sure if we want to use it right now. Oh, I it, see. It, so it works pretty good, for example, with uh, Bard classes, Bard, Bardic performance. We can roll that to chat and you can see that we have Battle Ballad as one of the options. Oh, wow. So we will apply that and Battle Ballad works that way that you, on each of your turn, you deal plus one damage to one target of your choice when you wow. make an attack. Okay. So with great, we will make attack with Great Bow and it will ask us if you want to use Battle Ballad as part of that action. Let's say we don't want to use it right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hit and when we hover over it, we see that uh, it is not applied. So we have yep. only base value and heavy hit. But if we want to use it, um, let's do it again and click yes. It is base value plus battle ballad plus heavy hit and it's there four it piercing damage. Love it. And as you can see, it is turned off because it's only once per turn. So if we go to another round, Whoa, it, it pops up. Amazing. Yeah. It is also configured here in uh, event. And as you can see, how does that how that it, uh, event is done? We have damage modifier. So to every every attack type, and we have uh, event uh, event. So mm. because we are event will, if event disables something, it will dis disable full full effect that it is in. So that's why we can do stuff like that. So battle ballad gives us plus one damage, but we can disable the whole uh, effect with that one event here. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, complicated at the beginning and still, as I said, uh, I have a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work to do with that, but yeah. But I see uh, the basic that, concepts. Yeah, it, you've yeah. got it set up enough that you can use all that different syntax to make it do what it needs to do. And then it's helpful just to see some of these examples so we can come in and look at them and reverse yeah, engineer so how you did it. Right now, I think that's it from core features of... Uh, well, I have to say, this is this is exciting. This is a lot of automation that you added just in the last few weeks. Um, okay, so tell us what's what's next. Where do you want to take it next? And and I think it's also important to say what where do you where do you see the stopping line and that you see like maybe module developers mm -hmm. coming in and and doing other things like so what's next and then where do you stop and then you know, where do you see yeah, so, module developers coming in? Uh, when it comes to automation, uh, so there are a lot of improvements that I could make for event system for uh, conditionals this is this, this is not something i showed today but i showed it in the first video i think and uh, as i said when it come where where i would stop i would not automate it fully so it all is applied automatically without any mm -hmm. input from the dm or players mm -hmm. so probably there will be a lot of buttons on my end when i finish with automation so mm -hmm. i can see some people working on fully automating that with yeah. some yeah maybe giving us like sort of presets of the amount of automation we'd like to do yeah um, with some yeah full full proving that's where i see it but i had a lot of fun with playing with automation with figuring out ways to do some stuff or yeah. stealing it from other systems or modules people for sure can see some inspiration Oh, no doubt. Uh, yeah, there's some, yeah. there's some, uh, definitely some best practices in here. I also see developer, third party, at least content developers, making things like special ma magic items. And no, they'll want to know how all of this automation works because they'll have to code all of the special things into, you know, those items, for example. Uh, even yeah. So... Custom spells and things like that. So for the next update, I I want to focus on character advancement so mm -hmm. creation wizard, better npc sheet also maybe modular npc yes or modular companion so that's my goal for the next update and then i will probably go back to automation and 
play some more with uh, events, with macros, item macros. For example, I have idea of create item macro that will be run when item is created or mm -hmm. uh, delete or uh, roll item macro. So a lot of places where I would like to give players space to program something, I would say, behaviors. So I uh, I don't want everything to be hard-coded. It's better to give some flexibility. It will be harder a little bit, but there are there will be a lot of people that will do it for less advanced with programming player, uh, players. So Yeah, right. Okay, good. All right, well, this is pretty good so far, Patrick. Thanks for all the all the hard work on this. I'm looking forward to playing our next game and, and using some of this uh, automation that you built into it. Um, cool. Well, I guess that's it for now. Uh, stay tuned, everybody, for the next episode. We'll keep, uh, keep tabs on the progress with the system. If you guys have questions or if you guys end up wanting to use this or you end up using this and you have questions, leave them in the comments to this video. If you've got like requests for features and stuff like that, go ahead and put them in the comments here. We also have a Discord uh, we have an official channel on the Foundry Discord, in fact, these days. So I'll link that from the description, uh, video description, so you guys can come and ask questions and, and kind of get involved. And with that, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Patrick, for walking me through it. Uh, thank you for having me. Awesome. All right, we'll see you at the next one.